Revelation chapter 15 is the shortest chapter in the New Testament. We should have had Justice read it for us. Good opportunity or lost in one of you guys. But Revelation 15 is, it introduces, look at verse 1, it says, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. I want to talk about this victory that is gotten over the beast, and over the image, and over the mark, and over the number, if you notice that in verse number two. Now, I believe that the technology advancements that we're seeing in these days have a satanic purpose behind them. Uh, I am not such a Luddite that I say use no technology whatsoever. You guys know me, I'm an IT guy. I know technology and mechanics and things like that, but I really do believe that a lot of the technology that is really advancing currently today has a satanic purpose behind it. Um, and I believe that artificial intelligence is this image of the beast. The Antichrist has an image of the beast, AI. AI. So one guy said, well, AI is not in the Bible. Well, there was a city called AI after Jericho, but we're not talking about that. I am talking about this artificial intelligence, as it seems, that seems to have power, seems to be sentient, has uh, cognition, seems to be able to think and do and act and harm and function on its own and create, even if you will, if it really is alive. Um, and I believe that everything is here in the book of Revelation that answers this. With the advent of Google and the internet, just in our lifetimes, we've seen just this constant growth, hand upon fist. I mean, we're, we're uh, the, the, the curve, the, what is it, is it Moore's Law where the processor technology will double every two years and that actually has held true. Every time they say, oh, it looks like we're going to miss the mark and it's like, oh, new processor came out and lo and behold, the technology doubles every two years. Memory storage is just constantly increased. Technology, visual technology uh, is getting constantly better. I believe it goes back to this one purpose, that Satan himself wants to rule over the earth. The devil wanting to be like the Most High, he has a desire to be all-knowing, and I think he's going to use technology. He has a desire to be all-powerful, and he's going to use technology. He has a desire to be in all places. Again, he's going to use artificial intelligence, transhumanism, the internet, augmented reality, uh, digital currency. It all falls under one big umbrella. And we see it here summarized by four points. In verse number two, look at it again with me. Revelation 15, verse two, it says, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, it's the beast right there, that person, the, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name. I want to talk about how to have victory over the Antichrist and artificial intelligence, which I believe are becoming one and the same thing. I believe that these systems will be specifically used to do false signs and miracles for the Antichrist. I believe it will be used to create wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes. I believe it will be used to enslave humanity, create World War III, but specifically to persecute those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. To really use technology to be oppressive to Bible-believing Christians. The first in the list, the victory over the beast. Most of you know this beast is also called the Antichrist. Now elsewhere there are two beasts introduced. It's first the Antichrist beast, then later the false prophet beast comes up and says everyone should worship the first beast. This beast is the Antichrist. He's also called the man of sin, and he's called the son of perdition. In 2 Thessalonians 2 it says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. 
This person, when he walks on the earth, won't just say, I am God. He won't just say, I am a God. He will say, I am better than all the gods. He will say, I am like all of the gods, but I'm better than them. I'm exalted above all that is called God. He, it says, or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We have a future fulfillment of prophecy that has never happened before. We've never seen the, the coming of the Lord and the gathering together. The resurrection is not past already as the preterists would teach. Now, I want you to know these things must come to pass. It will be fulfilled. God's going to tell us how to get the victory. And in 2 Thessalonians 2, he says, this man is going to say that he's God, he's better than God, and he will sit in the temple of God proclaiming himself that he's God. And what that will look like will be the fulfillment or a false fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies. He will say, I am the Christ. It wasn't Jesus. It's me. What Isaiah said, that's me. What Ezekiel said, that's me. He will, the picture with Abraham, that's me. The picture, I mean, he will, he will go through systematically the Old Testament and be able to point to all those prophecies and say, I am fulfilling this now as we build a temple and I sit in it and I say that I am God. So I want you to understand that will be a major sign of this beast, the Antichrist. We will notice when that happens, regardless of your uh, eschatology, your end times view, your timeline opinion, when this happens, you're going to wake up if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you and you're going to say, whoa, this isn't good. There will be a false Jewish Messiah coming. He will claim to be better than Jesus. He'll claim to be God. This is important to understand. Uh, notice, so we're talking about getting victory over the beast and over his system. I'm going to define it. Then I'm going to show you how the Bible teaches us to have victory over the image of the beast that's coming, this artificial intelligence. Uh, the next, he says, victory over the beast. We're in Revelation 15, verse number 2, over the beast and over his image. If you would like, you can go to Revelation 13 with me. I've got a couple verses in Revelation 13. Over the beast and over the image. The image is a living system that will look like the Antichrist. That uh, image is another word for, you could say, statue or likeness or appearance. It's going to look just like that man, the Antichrist. It will be some sort of a living statue. There have been many theories on, are we talking about a hologram or a projection? That's entirely possible. Uh, will it be driven by technology? I believe so. I believe the Bible indicates that. Uh, you're in Revelation 13. I believe this is artificial intelligence. Look at verse 14. This is the image. It says, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live. There's that false resurrection or technology-empowered resurrection or perhaps a man died and a devil inhabited the body and brought it back, okay? And this is not technology that just comes up overnight. They don't just say, oh, look, last night somebody invented something that we can give life to an image. No, I believe this is something that they are actively working on right now. They are pursuing this singularity point of technology where technology can overcome human life or merge with human life. I believe this is the, I mean, this is the stated goal of a lot of your brainiacs today. And uh, it's, I believe, prophesied here in Revelation. In Revelation 15, it said, oh, the victory over the beast, over his image, over the mark, over the mark. The mark will be implantable technology for identification and commerce. Look at verse number 17. Revelation 13, verse number 17. And that mo no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. The, the verse before says it's in the right hand, right? Right hand or forehead, something will go in there and it will be the name of the beast and the number of his name. It's interesting that this mark in Revelation 15 was then identified as, he says, victory over his mark 
and victory over the number of his name. I want you to understand about the number of his name that, you know, we know that this is the 666. That's the last verse in chapter 13. Now, man was created on the sixth day. I believe the devil, the angels were created on the sixth day also. And they were in the third heaven. Uh, that 666 will represent, not just symbolically, but literally, somehow, it will be evident that this man that claims to be God and sit in the temple and be the King and Messiah of Israel, that his name will be 666. That his name will equal, equate to 666. And here's the thing. This will not be very much of a mystery. I believe we're dealing with evident knowledge common knowledge. I believe that when this happens, everyone will be aware. They'll say, well, those Christians won't get on board because they don't like his name. Those Christians won't get on board because of the book of Revelation tells us about 666. So then what will they do? Well, they'll attack the Bible. They'll say, well, Revelation shouldn't be in the Bible anyway, and we need the Old Testament. And we go back to the Hebrew, and we'll let the rabbis tell us what to believe, right? So they'll begin to change the argument and move the goalposts, so to speak, I believe, whenever this comes up. But it will be common knowledge that Christians will not receive this mark in their hand because they believe this man that's claiming to be God is an antichrist and that he is operating by the power of Satan himself, and he's there for one reason, and that's to kill. And take the place of Jesus, really. The number of his name. It will be evident. People will know it. And the problem is, people that hate biblical Christianity, or people that have seared their conscience and have a hard heart toward God, they won't have a problem crossing that line and receiving the mark of the devil. It won't bother them a bit because they already hate God. They've already rejected God. They don't want the Bible. They don't want to be a Christian. And, and they will not only love the technology, but they'll hate God. And that combination will be um, very commonplace. So the goal for Christianity was, to, it says, to get victory over uh, the, these things, the beast, the image, the mark, and the number of his name. Satan has devices. In 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, when it says that there, it's talking about the mind of the devil and the things that he devises, that he creates or cooks up. It's interesting that it uses that word devices because it, it really means the mind. Now, we are given what's called the mind of Christ. Right. You could call the Bible the mind of Christ. I think that's acceptable. Uh, we're, we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We want the mind of Christ. Well, the mind of Satan is this devilish, devilish technology, the, the devices of Satan. God doesn't want us to be ignorant of that because we are under attack. And I really do believe there literally is proof to show you that there is technology specifically engineered to begin to set up a kingdom for the devil and his false Christ. And there are machines that are created not to glorify God, but to glorify Satan. These things exist today. Um, it, you know, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Revelation 6 give us this timeline where there will be false Christs and there will be world war and there will be famine and 25% of the population dying and the mark of the beast and this pestilence and this, this technology coming down at this time in the world. And we live in a day now where there are drones everywhere. I mean, every kid has a drone in the backyard just about. And Now imagine what an artificial intelligence if the devil could get his tentacles in every computer in the world and to every drone, because now every, there's a law passed that every drone has to be uh, controllable essentially by the FAA and they can shut certain things on and off and, and it's not just about the drones. But I've heard my whole life, I've heard many Christians say, well, I know what we'll do. We'll, we'll, we'll dig a bunker and we'll go hide in the woods. And it's like, well, well the drones don't sleep. And they can fly a hundred of them over your plot of land and they can do this 24 seven and they have thermal imaging and they can spot you. It's not like the cold war where if we hide under the leaves and the guy walks by with the soldier, we're good to go. This is different. This is technology driven with a spiritual influence, with a purpose to try to kill and to steal and to destroy. The devil wants to kill biblical Christianity. 
He wants to wipe off the face of the earth. Christians. This technology reports back to the database. It reports back to Satan 24-7. I believe when we get to this point, and I know, I know it seems like we're in the end times. I've heard that my whole life, and yet I'll tell you, I'm planning on raising up my children to be able to see their grandchildren. I'm not going to live in fear of the end times, but I'm going to know what the Bible says. I'm going to educate myself, and I'm going to prepare myself. And that's what this sermon is about, how to get victory over the mark of the beast, how to get victory over artificial intelligence and the image of the beast that we see, this antichrist image. I believe in those times that they will ultimately out law farms. They will say farming is a scourge and they'll come and kill your livestock and blame you for this GMO pestilence that they've released upon the world that's causing a famine. I, I believe they'll mandate these medical manipulations uh, and you have to have this jab to be able to work or to stand in the food line and get some food. You're going to have to, they're going to try to bottleneck you into this system. Uh, near the end times, biblical Christianity will become illegal. They will find reasons to make it illegal. Oh, yeah. Problem, reaction, solution. The solution is the mark of the beast, worshiping the image of the beast, worshiping the dragon that gives the beast his power. And they'll say anybody that doesn't get on board, they're part of the problem. Christians. Christians will be part of the problem. That's how they're going to spin it and present it. Listen, we're saved by faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. The rest of the false Christians religions and especially false Christianity, the Catholics and and Reformed Christianity, they're going to change to be able to meet the beast and acquiesce to their power and their system so they can still live and survive and thrive. And just like the Muslims and the Mormons and the Masons and the Zionists and all other religions, they will get on board with this one world religion and they'll worship this man. Now you're in Revelation 13. I want you to see this. Look at verse number 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This image of the beast, it has a few things. It has power, it has life, it can speak, and it can kill. This, I believe, sums up what we call today artificial intelligence and especially where it's going. Uh, when you, right now, they're rolling out servers where you can have your own artificial intelligence server back in your server rack in your company. Um, I know we're just now hearing about these things where people can type things in or say something, draw me this kind of picture, and it, and it draws it just as quickly as you can give it some input. There are people that are saying, okay, give me a uh, side hustle idea, give me a money, I want you to make a, something for me that I can sell on the internet, and people are speaking into a machine, and the machine is giving them a digital product and setting up an account and helping them sell it, and then all of a sudden they're just generating revenue very quickly off some of these uh, concepts from using the brain of artificial intelligence. Many companies are taking these the power of these servers now and focusing it in on their industry and making major advancements. And uh, it's going to be everywhere, just like the PC or the phone. The phone will just be the client, and the artificial technology, the cloud, this B system will have all power to be everywhere, to see everything, to recall things. And we're just now, I think we're on the, the cliff of this in our time, in our generation. And I, I don't say this to be afraid. I don't want to be an alarmist. I want to show you what the Bible says, how to have victory over it, because God has truly given us the victory. Notice he says of this image of the beast, in verse 15, it says, he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. It seemingly has power. It's animated, right? Uh, and again, this will be powered by the devil himself as he wants control over thing around the world. It says that the beast should both speak, speak, that's an interactive communication, as if it can see and hear and talk and interact with people. Uh, it can, <laughs> I believe it will be able to see your brain waves and read your mind. That's not new technology. That's old technology. I mean, there's a uh, MRI scans. They say there's a, a server where they show it, where they actually have people. Okay, think about an image. And I, just focus, meditate on one thing. And, that, and then they scan their brain, and then the computer reads the MRI, and recreates the image 
And they're saying 90 to 95% accuracy on whatever you were thinking about, your brain waves were in a certain frequency. They took a picture of that, a snapshot, and the computer guessed at what you were dreaming, envisioning in your mind. Computers are getting very, very powerful. It says that it has basically the power of life and the power to take life, to restrict life or restrict medical care, I believe, is the direction it will go. I remember back in 1999, MSN, the Microsoft Network, a Microsoft company, patented the human body as a battery. It literally patented your body as a battery. It's an energy storage device so that we could put a machine on you and it can feed off of your energy. And now most of you probably know about Verichip, the implantable chips, uh, Neuralink, where they want to plug into you to control you or let you control things. Um, ID2020, a Bill Gates program where they want to have everybody having a chip. I mean, so these steps that Revelation 13 and 15 and 16 and 20 and 19, these things that the Bible talks about is happening today. Like this is actually taking place in our generation that for the first time the technology is actually here. And then our federal government says, hey, we need a digital currency. Everybody will have to have a phone to be able to buy and sell, to trade and exchange with this digital currency. I believe that the Satanic Talmud has outlined also how the government will work with the seven laws of Noah, uh, where it talks about righteous things, it seems, but yet it talks about basically it will ha give the power to behead anybody that believes in Jesus instead of their Christ. Just this past week in Israel, do you might see what's going on over there with their, their, their riots and they're having problems because the government tries to re bring in sweeping reform. They want to lock you up for one year if you preach the name of Jesus to an adult or two years if you preach it to a child. They want to put you in prison for two years for preaching the name of Jesus to a child. That is antichrist. They are preparing for their own Christ. You're in Revelation 13. Look at verse number 4. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? This beast is the Antichrist. He will be the king of Israel. He will be their Messiah and Savior Look at verse number 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, the dragon, of course, that's the, the great red dragon, that, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, right? Look at the next verse, and it says, And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, which causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, and he doeth great wonders, that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by the sword and did live. God's giving us a timeline here of some very supernatural things that will take place first. But then he tells us how to have victory. Look at verse number 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. You say, how is that victorious? Well, God's telling us, now be patient, have faith. Those that attack you, I will judge. Go to the next chapter. Go to Revelation 14. Look at number 11. Revelation 14, verse 11. In the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. There it is again. We saw it in 13.10. Underline it. We see it here in 14, verse 12. Underline it. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Well, if you believe what Jesus said, He is coming back. If you believe His promise, there's a reward to come. If you believe His warning, there is a false Christ. It's a false Messiah. It's a terrible time on earth. And yet He said, be patient. Be patient. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
The Lord Jesus Christ will get us through a very difficult time for the faith of Jesus so that we can still preach the gospel. Look at verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. I want everybody to realize this. Your works will follow you. Your works will follow you wherever you go. You have a reputation. You have a history. You have a past. Hey, and we are all sinful mankind. Uh, and, but thank God for His grace, the gift of everlasting life. And now that you're a son of God, He says, if you work for me, it will follow you into eternity. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Don't give in when everybody else says, just go on down there and take that chip. It's not that bad. Oh, that guy in Israel, he's a good guy. Why do you hate him so much? Listen, it will be an antichrist. He'll be a false Christ. There's only one Christ. There's only one Savior, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And we must be faithful. We must be patient. And there will be Christians that will lay their life down in this time. And God says, don't worry. Your works will follow you. Your works will follow you. Go to Revelation chapter 20. Go to Revelation chapter number 20. Artificial intelligence is becoming such a pervasive technology, it's already affected all of our lives. Yeah. Now it's just passing the, it's going beyond these limitations and it's empowering these antichrist systems. It's building the blocks for the image of the beast, this uh, satanic information system. I mean, he is getting ready to build something. And look, it could be 100 years from now. It's entirely possible that it could be 100 years from now. I want to be clear on this. Yeah. It could happen at any moment. No, it can't. There are things yet to come. Yeah. Until you see those signs, you know, don't head for the hills. But when you head there, just know a drone might be following you. All right? <laughs> I say this to help us to see how God's going to tell us to have victory. And it may very well be that he says your victory is to lay down your life and to have patience because your works will follow you. Revelation 20, look at verse number 4. Here's the victory. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is a promise of God. We have another life to live after this one. This body is temporary. You will be in the resurrection the question is, what's waiting for you? If your works will follow you from here into there, and he says, you be patient, you be faithful, you be true. The time will come where you may very well be presented, do I enjoy the pleasures of this world so much that I want to try to give in to that system rather than live for the Lord Jesus Christ? The devil's very clever at tempting us, isn't he? If you would, go to 1 John chapter 4. I believe it's important for us to begin to prepare our hearts now to avoid technology and really the covetousness of technology. I know many of you in here are already uh, going the way of low tech and uh, dumb phones instead of smartphones and uh, cutting back as much as you can. I don't want to be part of that system. I, I just want to withdraw and yet this system will be everywhere and it will manipulate whether you can drive and own property and pass a red light and walk into a store or go to an emergency room. The devil's going to put his technology, his tentacles everywhere to try to put this system in place. But don't be afraid. Be of good cheer. He's overcome the world, right? The faith is our victory. He's already made that clear. And this artificial intelligence, this image of the beast, they're building it as we speak. And yet God is going to give us some simple answers here. 1 John chapter 4, look at verse number 1. Beloved, 
Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. If they don't preach Jesus Christ, they're a false prophet. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now, already is it in the world. Already, it's already in the world. The spirit is here. That wicked spirit is what's driving the increase in technology. Go back two chapters. First John chapter 2, and we'll finish there. First John chapter 2. Find verse number 15. How do we get victory over the beast system? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It's a love issue. Notice what we read earlier. They have to worship the beast. They have to worship the image of the beast. They have to worship the dragon that gives power to the beast. Satan, the Antichrist, and this artificial intelligence. Their heart literally worships these things so that they can get what they want. God says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now this is a great verse. You, uh, you know, I teach this verse as this is what the devil can use. How can the devil get you? Well, it's real easy. It falls into one of three categories. It says uh, the lust of the flesh, the things you desire of your flesh that you want to consume for yourself. Next he says the lust of the eyes, the things you want to covet after and lust after and uh, dwell upon. And then he says, and the pride of life. Pride is the easy sin. He can get anybody. I feel I'm better than those people. Pride, often uh, those that would tempt others, they love the pride of the attention of getting somebody else to give in to them. I believe the devil uses those three tactics. That's what God's trying to tell us. Verse 17, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. He's telling us, you know, remember, false prophets will enter in after my departing, grievous wolves not sparing the flock. They want to devour you and hurt the innocent. And here he's saying there are already people that are anti-Christ. They're opposed to the Lord Jesus Christ. They're instead of God. And they come into your fellowship but now they're out. Isn't that interesting? He makes this point like they were once a Christian. There are many false prophets that are, that are um, you know, politicians. Oh, I'm a Catholic. Oh, I'm a Methodist. Oh, I'm a Baptist. And you can trust me. I'm a good old guy. And, and they're not. They never were. They're not biblical Christians. They're not trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. They practice another religion. It's all about the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. He says in verse 20, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That's a powerful verse. You understand that the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all truth. When we use these verses as the litmus test, wait, this prophet is saying Jesus didn't come in the flesh. That's a false prophet. Boy, something doesn't bear witness with my spirit. Something's wrong with their spirit. We have power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to say, Lord, help me to understand. I don't understand what's going on, but it doesn't feel right. Guide me and lead me and help me to glorify you and make sure I'm used of your will. Our prayer life, our internal prayer life is one 
one of the most important weapons when it comes to spiritual warfare. And when you get down to this end times, you're going to be weak in the flesh. You're going to be tired. You're going to be persecuted. You're, I mean, you think uh, as a parent, you don't get much sleep now. If we're alive during this time, you might be on the run with a bunch of children trying to protect them. Your neighbors are against you. Your family's against you. You're weak and wore out and you're tired and you're done. You can't get anything. You just, your head hurts and you just can't get, I mean, imagine. And the devil wants to ensnare you, but God has given you of the Holy Spirit inside of you that has greater power than everything else in this earth. What did Jesus say? I have meat to eat that you know not of. I get energy from the Holy Spirit in a supernatural way. Verse 21, he says, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath also hath the Father also. Listen, uh, end times Israel, it, it will be an antichrist nation. And they may say, we have the Father and we have another Messiah. If you don't have Jesus the Son, then you don't have the Father. He's making that clear. Their father is Satan himself. And the purpose behind this, if you remember in Revelation 15 where he started, he says, he saw them that had gotten victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. The only way to get victory over these things is to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. We have to really begin severing our heart. Our affections and our desires can become worship if we're not careful. And if we will separate ourselves unto Christ, if we will separate ourselves unto ministry and separate ourselves from the technologies of the world, they're going to make all the technology very lucrative and enticing. And you'll hear more and more, you'll hear stories how somebody submitted to the system and used this image of the beast, this artificial technology, and now they're a millionaire. You're going to hear more and more. And you know what? We're going to say, well, I don't know. I think, I'll, I think I'll wait. I think I'll get out of the system instead of going into the system. What God has given us in the Holy Spirit will be greater than artificial intelligence. And we're going to be surrounded with it in our generation. And I just want to encourage you to prepare your heart now and consider what do you love? Do you love the Bible? Or do you love the things of the world? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask that you would help us to have the victory over the temptations of the world. Lord, I pray that you would help us to prepare our hearts to get closer to you. Lord, I trust that you're going to continue to provide for us and protect us. Lord, I ask that you would give us the wisdom to protect the hearts of our children and prepare them to serve you for life. Lord, I ask that you would continue to give us time and be merciful to America. I pray that you would give us a space here in Jacksonville where we can continue to go out and preach the gospel and uh, see souls saved and see people get on fire for you. Lord, I ask that you would help us to just live out our days for you because we know that our works will follow us. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.